If you're coming at Logic Pro on iPad from GarageBand on iOS, for example, you'll be amazed at how much better the sharing and exporting options are. In this video, I'll show you the best way to export your project as an audio file, as well as how to export all tracks as individual audio files, aka stems. Alright, I have a finished project here, nothing too complicated as I want to keep things fairly straightforward for this video, but it's finished and I'm ready to share it. You can find the export menu by tapping on the small chevron in the top left of Logic Pro's screen and then tapping export. In the next screen, you have the option of renaming your project. Next, you can select to export either the entire project length, which is what I'll do, or you can select a specific start and end point to export. FYI, if cycle mode is on when you tap the projects button and then export, the part of the project enclosed by the cycle area determines the start and end positions. Make sure that you've designated where your project ends. Scroll all the way to the right, then tap and drag the small white arrow to the point where you want your project to finish. If you don't do this, you'll end up with a load of dead space at the end of your exported file. Below that, you can select whether to share a compressed or uncompressed file. If you tap the Wii Inspector icon next to uncompressed, you'll be taken to this screen. Here you can select between two uncompressed file formats, AIFF or WAV. AIFF is an Apple exclusive format less widely used than the WAV format. One of the main differences between them is how the audio information is stored. AIFF contains metadata and WAV files don't have any metadata, so programs store data for AIFFs differently. Neither file formats sound better as such, but AIFF files are larger than WAV files due to the metadata that they contain. Ultimately, regarding AIFF and WAV files, it all comes down to personal preference and your project's requirements. I would say that unless you require that baked in metadata, WAV is probably the way to go here. You can choose between 24-bit or 16-bit audio in the next menu. You should probably choose 24-bit audio here, while yes, there isn't much audible difference between the two bit rates on the face of it, if you plan to have your exported file mastered or are sending stems off for someone to continue working with, you want to be sharing the highest quality files possible. In the sample rate menu, you can select to change the default sample rate to 48 kHz, 88.2 kHz or 96 kHz. If you're sending your files to someone and you know that they are working with a certain sample rate, it would be helpful to match it here. There is a whole big audio file rabbit hole about which sample rate is best that I'm not going to dive into here. But I have linked an article that explains the ins and outs of it down below the like button if you want to check it out. If you'd rather share a compressed file, Logic Pro only exports M4A files, no MP3 here, and you can select between AAC and ALAC codecs, probably best to just stick with the default. The bitrate of your compressed file, 320 kilobits per second is probably best, or you can encode it with a variable bitrate, meaning that the bitrate will fluctuate throughout the exporting process depending on how complex different parts of your project are. Below the file type section is the best part of all of this. You can choose to export all tracks as individual audio files. Toggling this will mean that a zip file will be created when you hit export that will, unsurprisingly, contain all of the tracks in your project as separate audio files, meaning you can share them with a collaborator or producer who can then import their files into any DAW on any platform. Yes, please. Tapping on Processing Details takes you to this screen where you can choose whether to include the audio tail. That's an option to include processing that takes place after the song ends, like delays or reverbs that go on after the last region has ended, for example. You can also choose to automatically normalize your project during the export. 
This essentially applies compression and limiting to your exported audio, making it louder overall, but also removing a lot of dynamics. You can also choose overload protection only here, which only affects levels above zero decibels, which would lead to clipping, which you would probably notice and fix while mixing your project anyway. So I'd not recommend selecting this option at all, really. Just keep it off. You can choose to include or exclude any plugins you have loaded on the output channel strip here. And you can select whether to include volume and panning automation. I do have some volume automation on one of these tracks, so I'll keep this on. With all that sorted, I'll tap share and Logic will begin exporting all of the tracks. Once that's done, the share menu will pop up and you'll have the option to do things like airdrop your stems, email them, or save them to your files app, which is what I'll do. Heading into my files app, here's the zip file that contains all of my individual audio files. Tapping on it will uncompress it, and then I'm able to go into its folder and listen to each exported file individually. I can then take these files and open them in a completely different DAW on iPad. or even on Mac. There you go, that's how to export your stems in Logic Pro for iPad. Let me know your thoughts down below, and if you could give that like button a stern talking to on your way past, I'd really appreciate it. If you're still confused about how exactly to use third-party AUV instruments in Logic Pro for iPad, watch this next.